by considering the role of the public sector in our economy. It allocates, it regulates, distributes and stabilises. Not all the goods and services that we use in our daily lives come from shops and it's easy to take a lot of them for granted. Right now, for example, I'm standing on a pavement provided by the government. Here's a municipal bin and here is a traffic safety interchange management device, better known as a traffic light. And the list goes on. Whether it's attending a public school, switching on a light, opening a tap, switching on your radio or TV, visiting a public hospital, you're making use of a product or service provided by government. If you need police protection or your country has to defend itself against foreign aggressors, you're also using a service provided by government. So, in effect, government is using our scarce resources to provide goods and services to the whole country. In economics, this is referred to as the allocation role of government. It allocates resources to provide goods and services for its citizens. And since our resources are scarce, we need to evaluate how efficiently government makes use of them, as we can't afford to waste them. There's another very important service that government provides, and that's the protection of its citizens, the safeguarding of their rights to economic and physical well-being. We're talking about our legal system the creation and maintenance of our social and legal framework through various laws, ordinances and regulations. We refer to this as the regulatory and ordering function of government and it is through this function that government intervenes indirectly in the economy. This regulatory role includes the provision and development of our legal system with its various laws. It's there to ensure that commercial transactions are upheld Labour disputes are resolved and property rights are well-defined and enforced. This regulatory function also implements environmental controls to force producers to adhere to certain standards. For instance, motor vehicle manufacturers are required by law to install platinum catalysts in the exhaust pipes of the cars they make to reduce the emissions of carbon monoxide and so try to reduce the negative impact on our environment. Another example is the specification for biodegradable plastic bags, another measure to protect the environment. It also includes the regulation of monopolies. A monopoly occurs when the output of an entire industry is produced or controlled by one firm. Government must try to implement policies that promote a competitive environment. As well as its allocation, regulation and ordering functions, the government is also involved in the redistribution of income and wealth. If you receive some form of child support grant, old age pension, or are a beneficiary of black economic empowerment, you're part of the attempt of government to redistribute the income and wealth of the nation. This may be due to inequality as a result of previous government policy, or else due to adverse global economic conditions. Every country but especially developing nations have their own unique set of social and economic inequalities to address and the role of government is to try to address these without creating new inequalities. It's almost always a very difficult task. A fourth function of government is its stabilisation role. This involves the use of monetary and fiscal policies in order to stabilise the economic cycle to smooth the ups and downs. So the various activities of government in our economy can therefore be summarised into the following functions. The allocation function, the way government allocates resources to provide essential goods and services. Secondly, government has a regulatory and ordering function. Laws and regulations put in place in order to set best standards and practices to control the activities of monopolies and other firms in markets which are not perfectly competitive, and to monitor and control externalities such as pollution. Thirdly, government has its distribution role. Government tries to implement policies that, we hope, bring about a more fair and equitable distribution of income or wealth among all its citizens. And finally, 
there is the stabilisation role of government. This refers to the monetary and fiscal policies of government which are aimed at promoting economic stability, protecting us or reducing the vulnerability of our economy to extreme fluctuations in national and global events. Now that we know a bit more about